This is KGW News at 11. We got our first real taste of the classic Pacific Northwest fall today. A soggy Saturday with nearly an inch of rain in the Portland metro area. And we're in for even more tomorrow. Meanwhile, up on the mountain, light snow created some slushy conditions. It's the first snowfall for Mount Hood this season. Good evening and thanks so much for staying up with us. I'm Brittany Falkers. Now many of us are wondering how long this wet weather is going to be sticking around. So let's bring in meteorologist Chris McGinnis. Chris, what can you tell us? Well, you said typical fall weather, right? So let's think and get out your calendar here. No, it's not going to last that long. Uh, but yes, we do have another rainy day in the forecast for Sunday, primarily Sunday afternoon and probably again Monday and Tuesday. More on that in a second. Let's show you the radar real quick. Over the last few hours, the significant rain that we saw earlier this afternoon is, is really winding down. But as Brittany mentioned, a pretty good soaking up and down the I-5 corridor. Troutdale, one of the big winners, close to an inch, almost that in Vancouver as well. PDX, officially seven eight hundredths of an inch at the airport and counting. We still have some light showers out there this evening, but they will diminish a bit as we go through the overnight hours. I want to fast forward into Sunday. I think we start the day dry, but here's a quick look at Futurecast tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Another round of steadier, heavier rain comes in. We think there'll be some wind with that as well. And yes, maybe some cascade snows. I thought I'd take a second and take a look at this beautiful photograph of Mount Hood in less snowy times from Alicia Golic. The forecast up on the mountain today will actually, or tomorrow I should say, will actually have increasing snow levels. So no past level concerns as far as the weather is concerned tomorrow other than the, the rainy conditions developing. And Brittany, as I mentioned, it will turn windy tomorrow afternoon as well. More on that with your full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thanks so much. Well, snow on the mountain has skiers and snowboarders excited. So we went to find out how the season will look this year with those COVID precautions. Crystal Kumwe takes us to Mount Hood Meadows. We are seeing a mixture of snow and rain in Mount Hood Meadows Saturday afternoon and a light dusting on the ground that could all change by Thanksgiving. And if you're thinking of hitting the slopes this season, expect a few changes. The top of the mountain got a fresh new layer of snow. As Meadows gears up for its new season, COVID-19 safety measures are at the forefront. The main difference between this season and all other seasons will be that everybody at Mount Hood Meadows will have a face mask or face covering on. Dave Tragathon with the resort says guests should also plan on making their vehicle their lodge for the day. Put your boots on in your vehicle. Come on up. If you're going to have lunch, maybe grab and go from our restaurants or bring your own picnic and go back to your car and eat there. Stay out of the lodges as much as possible. People coming up here should already have a reservation for rental equipment lessons or have their season pass or a ticket good for that day. That's how Meadows will manage access to the mountain. We anticipate how many pass holders we're going to have come out and then we only make available a certain number of lift tickets for each day. A regular season sees a little over 5,000 people on peak days. This season, the goal is to lower that number to 3,000. Instead of having everybody arrive here and have four or 5,000 people here at one time early in the morning, we want to stagger out that arrival and shift that to later in the day. Meadows is incentivizing day ticket purchasers to visit midweek through discount pricing. If you can delay your arrival at Meadows to later in the day, or pick a Tuesday, you might save $50 if you come at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday versus 9 o'clock on a Saturday. There are a lot of changes and challenges on the horizon, but he is optimistic about the upcoming season. Ultimately, we need people to have patience and we need people to be kind this year. I mean, this is a lot of, you know, nobody likes worrying this. Be patient, be kind, have fun. Dave says these measures are subject to change if and when they see necessary throughout the season. At Mount Hood Meadows, Cristal Kumwe, KGW News. For a record-breaking third day in a row, Oregon has reported more than 400 new infections. 409 new cases were added today. That's down from the 425 cases announced yesterday and the record high 484 cases announced Thursday, but health officials say the numbers are still concerning. This graph provides a little more perspective. It shows the percentage of tests taken that are positive. Right now, that's at 6.4%, but health officials want to see that number under five. 
It would be nice to think that case numbers are up because there are more tests being run, but in reality, it's about the same amount of tests as we had in late June and all of July and the positivity rate was lower back then. So here's a look at deaths in the state. They do remain relatively low. Two more were announced today. The Oregon Health Authority says that 599 people have died since the beginning of the pandemic. Two elementary schools in the Estacada School District will remain closed now that two people tested positive for COVID. Both cases involve adults. Most students in the district are doing online learning, except for a few dozen who are receiving limited in-person instruction a few hours a day. None of those students were believed to be in close contact with the people who tested positive. As a precaution, the district canceled in-person instruction for now at both River Mill and Clackamas River Elementary Schools because of staff crossover between those buildings. In the meantime, the middle and high school in the district are continuing limited in-person instruction as normal. Today is World Mental Health Day, and without a doubt, 2020 has been a challenging year in so many different ways. Art Edwards tells us what the World Health Organization and local groups are doing to help. Mental health is one of the most neglected areas of public health, according to the World Health Organization. Here in Oregon, between the pandemic and the recent wildfires, many people are struggling to deal with all the change and uncertainty. Recently, Lines for Life, a nonprofit dedicated to preventing substance abuse and suicide, started something new, the Safe and Strong Helpline, designed to help people deal with disasters. They're going to be met by people on the other end of the line who really care about them, have compassion for them 24-7. Whenever somebody's feeling that emotional stress, really, we're there to help them through that time. The WHO stresses it is completely normal to feel sad, stressed, or even angry during this pandemic. It suggests things like making sure you're getting plenty of sleep, staying in touch with loved ones, and talking to a mental health professional if you feel overwhelmed. KGW recently talked with a psychologist from Providence Health and Services about how to cope and help others. The best ways to strike up a conversation about stress, anxiety, depression is to start with owning what's going on for you. Because the reality is we're all dealing with anxiety and sadness and grief and loss and trauma right now. And when we share our own experiences with another person, it gives them the opportunity to share theirs as well. Today on Twitter, hashtag World Mental Health Day is trending. Athletes, entertainers, sports teams, and everyday people are tweeting messages, encouraging people to check themselves and friends and to not be afraid to speak out. The World Health Organization hopes World Mental Health Day will kickstart a massive investment in dealing with mental health. Art Edwards, KGW News. Thank you, Art. And if you or someone you know is struggling, you can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It's open 24-7, and that number is right there on your screen. 1-800-273-8255. Protests are continuing tonight in Portland. A group has gathered outside the North Police Precinct. Officers say demonstrators have been in the road. They're wearing dark clothing and police are warning drivers that they could be hard to see. Police are asking demonstrators to move to the sidewalk and they're warning that tear gas and other impact weapons may be used. Police say multiple arrests have already been made. And we're following a developing story out of Denver tonight. One person was killed today near dueling protests between far right and far left groups. A private security guard contracted by a local TV news station, KUSA, was taken into custody. Police originally took two people in and later found the second individual, a TV news producer, was not involved in that incident. The victim has not been identified.